Okay, next topic is going to be atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib. And the first thing I want you to remember is that in AFib, the, the rhythm is going to be completely irregular. This patient is going to present with palpitations and an irregular pulse. They're going to have a history of things such as ischemia, ischemic heart disease, coronary artery disease, hypertension. Hypertension is actually your most common etiology for AFib. And the first thing you want to do is to see whether it's an arrhythmia or not. And the, the, the way you're going to see whether it's an arrhythmia or not is first by looking at the heart rate. Because the normal heart rate is what? 220 minus the age. And if the heart rate is extremely high, most probably you're dealing with an arrhythmia. So we see that the rhythm is completely irregular. We see absent P waves. And the patient comes in with palpitations. And our first step is going to be to see whether the patient is stable or unstable. And if the patient is stable, what we're going to do is we're going to order an EKG, Holter monitoring, and an echocardiogram. And when we look at that EKG, if the EKG shows us nothing, we're going to order telemetry plus an ambulatory Holter monitoring. This is in the stable patients. We want to slow the patients to a ventricular heart rate if it's over 100 with a couple of drugs we can use. Beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, or second line digoxin. But it's going to be depending on the history. Okay, So calcium channel blockers we know are usually our first line. But what if the patient's an asthmatic, for example? Our first line becomes a beta blocker. So based on the history, we're going to use either beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, or digoxin. Now, if the patient has spontaneous conversion with one of these drugs, we're going to assess the cause of the AFib, and we're going to discharge these patients and follow these patients up. But if we've given the, these drugs and they're still over 100, we want to first assess to see if there's any type of contraindications to cardioversion before we go and cardiovert them immediately. And if there's no spontaneous conversion and they're stable and they're still over 100, if there's no contraindications and there's AFib less than 48 hours, we're going to do immediate electrical cardioversion. But if there's no contraindications and the AFib has been over 48 hours ago, we're going to do an elective cardioversion. We have to remember once the rate has been controlled, we have to anticoagulate these patients with warfarin to a target INR of 2 to 3. If the arrhythmia persists beyond two days. Now, what is lone AFib? Lone AFib is defined as AFib presenting without any other signs of heart disease. And, and if you have a patient with lone AFib, all you're going to do is aspirin as anticoagulation because you want to prevent stroke. So that's a stable patient with AFib. Now, if the patient is unstable with AFib, we have to go to immediate synchronized cardioversion. How do we define stability? They're unstable if they have a systolic of less than 90, if they have congestive heart failure, if they have chest pain, shortness of breath, or any type of hemodynamic instability, okay, such as a capillary refill time over two seconds, etc. Okay? If the patient's unstable, we're going to do an immediate synchronized electrical cardioversion. So basically, remember, in AFib, the first thing we want to do is see if the patient's stable or unstable. Okay, if they're stable, we're doing EKG, Holter, and Echo. EKG shows nothing, we're going to order telemetry and an ambulatory Holter monitor. And we want to look at their heart rate. If it's over 100, we have to rate control them with meds. And it's going to depend on the history. If they're an asthmatic, we're, we, we obviously, we can't use beta blockers. And basically, if there is spontaneous conversion, we're going to assess the cause of the AFib, discharge and follow-up. But if there's no conversion still with the drugs, we're going to look at contraindications and consider anticoagulant therapy. If there are no contraindications and the AFib was over 48 hours ago, we're going to do a later elective cardioversion. But if it's within the 48-hour window period, we're going to do an immediate electrical cardioversion. And remember, both patients stable and unstable, once we've stabilized them, once the rate has been controlled, we have to anticoagulate them with the warfarin to an INR of 2 to 3 if the arrhythmia persists beyond 2 days. And that's AFib. And I think that's everything you need to know for your boards, okay? Enjoy, guys.